Okay, so this is my brand new storage room and also a place where I can charge all of my batteries. Now, if you've been following this YouTube channel for a while, you might recognize this room. This was actually the room that I used to have the big red sofa in that I used to do some of my older YouTube videos in. This was also a consultation room and over lockdown, me and Cass decided that we would turn this into a charging station and a place to store all of our gear. So let me first show you the first feature in this room, which is the charging station just over here. So here is where I've got a place where I can charge all of my batteries. All the charges are right here. As you can see, I've made this with, this is an Amazon pegboard. It comes as a set of three. So this is one of them. I then also bought this on Amazon. This is an eight, eight pin plug with also five USB ports at the side here. So you've got so much power that's going through just one cable that runs underneath the um, the, the desk here. So I can charge everything from my 5D and my R5, GoPros, um, the LED panels, the gimbals, Cassie's GH5, more GH5 speed lights, um, AA batteries. I've got a couple of, of these chargers here because these charge the Pika 200s or the AD 200s as well as the AD 300s and um, City 300s as well. So I've got a couple of these on the go as well. I love it, it's great. Um, we've got some lights also going around the side. I was really happy with them. Um, and I decided that I wanted to try and get some lighting on this shelving unit as well. So we've got it all connected just to a fancy little remote control. So if I hit it on, we can see that we can light up all of the uh, shelves as well. And they're just um, really basic lights from eBay. Again, I'll leave the links in the description of everything that you see here today. Um, the shelves units, they were from home base. Uh, so I bought one unit and realized we're definitely gonna need two of these. So, the, so two units, it costs about 70, 80 pounds each. And it's a five tier system where I'm able to store and collect everything. So I've got some sort of order to everything. Over here on the left, we've got all of the uh, strobes and up here, we've got some of the modifiers. Down the bottom here as well, we've got more modifiers. We've got the light stands, the tether stands. We've got all of our lenses and our cameras here as well and a bunch of other accessories that I'll come on to shortly. But let me show you real quick again, the charging station. So as I say, we've got everything run into one cable, but it doesn't charge everything. There are some strobes that can't, can't physically be attached. And the way they are actually attached is they're attached with double Velcro. So if I just take this off, so you can see it's just simply double Velcro, which attaches to there. So if I did want to take a particular charger away with me, if I'm going traveling and I know I'm going to need my Pika 200, then I can just physically take that off and I can throw that in. So everything, as I say, just held together with double Velcro, just making it really easy to attach. Again, everything will be in the description box below. But as I say, not everything can be charged on here. So we've got the bigger chargers like the City 600s or the AD 600, the City 600 Pros, the City 1200 Pros, they all have these kind of big power banks attached to them, which would take up loads of space on here. So that's where I've decided to put those underneath the desk. So let's go underneath the desk cast to show you here. Um, excuse the cable management, um, it will get better, but this will just give you a, a good idea to show you. So you can see here, uh, these two are really similar, so that's why I decided to label them. Um, so City 600, 600 Pro, and then 1200 here. Then, uh, so if we come back up top, grab the 600 Pro. Then I can grab the 600 Pro, pull it off, Put that on now there's no indication that it's charging and that's why exactly i've labeled them back underneath here so we can see now we can actually see that that is charging so if you can imagine you've come home you've just done a shoot maybe you've just done a wedding it's so easy now for me to walk in and just throw everything on charge put the cameras on charge put the portable strobes on charge put the bigger strobes on charge and i can also do all, all the backing up that i need to from here as well if i do need to and I haven't done it yet, but I might even do YouTube videos with the camera right there. Now I've got the R5, autofocus, and I can do 4K, which I haven't been able to before. I can now do that all from this camera using that 16 millimeter lens here. So it was just a bit of an afterthought that we would turn this into a workstation, but it's actually ended up working out really nicely. Uh, down here, it's just where I keep uh, some bags. So that's where the, the 1200 is stored. That's my 
camera bag when I want to pack a lot of my gear that just sits under there, neatly tucked underneath there. We come over here. This is where I keep all the cables. This was um, this was just made with a with a block of wood, and I think Dad just bought some pieces of wood here and to attach it all together, and then we just painted it black. So it's really simple. That's all the HDMI cables, um, Ethernet cables, all my clamps, uh, more clamps with some kettle leads. Uh, we've got the uh, tether cables down here and some extension cables right at the bottom here. Uh, all the bags that we've got, the low pro bags, we've got some peak design bags here. Um, these, this is the bag bags that I use when I go traveling. Um, these are the other two pegboards that come that come with the purchase when you buy them as a set of three. As you can see, this one is blank. We don't actually know yet what to put up here. So if you do have any suggestions, then do leave a comment below. It's a work in progress. So like here, we've got a, we've got um, some space here on the wall. I want to frame some mag magazine um, covers that where my images have been featured. Um, and we're going to change the door. And obviously those cable management underneath the, the uh, table is going to look a bit better as well. So it's a work in progress. Um, of course, the my old Mark III that I've had for over 10 years now, that's now retired and now is on the shelf along with my other cameras. I started with Nikon, in case you didn't know, that was the D40, my first, and the D300, which has seen better days. It did drop into the sea, which is really unfortunate, but yeah, so I couldn't get rid of it because it was kind of my first kind of pro camera that I had back in the day. But I digress, let's move on. So in the corner, we've got all the um, gravity backgrounds. There's also some from hand painted backdrops as well, based in the UK. That's where all of these guys live. Um, my favorite camera of all time, the Hasselblad. This is the 500 cm with the 150 centimeter lens, millimeter lens, sorry, uh, with a 16 millimeter extension tube. Um, that's my favorite camera of all time. And then if we scroll along, we've got some of the Polaroid cameras you might have seen from older videos, uh, Polaroid LAN cameras as well. Uh, and also the very first camera that I ever got, which is my Wallace and Gromit camera. I got when I was seven years old. That's That was my first ever camera. Uh, okay, so scrolling through, what else have we, what else haven't we done? This is Cassie's camera. This is her, her lenses and some of my Canon lenses that live here as well. Obviously my R5 is not here because Cassie is filming with it now. Scroll along, this is um, Cassie's gimbal and some of her bits. These are the speed lights, the Ricoh 400 by Ring Flash and all of the strobes here with the 300, 600 and other 600s. Up here as well, we've got some of the modifiers and the standard seven inch reflectors and the optical snoot, one of my favorite modifiers. Um, I did a video on this very modifier. It's one of my favorites. If you haven't seen it, I'll leave a card just up there. You can go and watch my review on the optical snoot that features a lens actually attached to a modifier. In here, I've got uh, some triggers, some of my triggers, some older triggers, some newer triggers um, that I've had through the years. This is my um, continuous light, my big continuous thousand watt uh, continuous light that I use when I'm doing filming. Uh, what else? We've got down here just some odds and sods. Again, it's just random stuff again down here. It's just some smart brackets and um, some random clamps here. And we've got some uh, mag mod stuff over here and then just other kind of odds and sods here that are just in here. Again, these are from home base and we spray and painted them black just so it kind of matched the theme, um, the color scheme that we have here in the room. And if you remember from my office video about how you can connect a DSLR as a webcam, you would have seen that I had a light that I had as a key light that was attached to the desk. Well, I've tried to do the same here again. So if we swing 180 cast, again, just like I have at, at home at my desk, I have a light that's also connected to a monopod pole and that's attached there, clamped there. And these cables here, so when I am using the DSLR, when I will use the DSLR, I've got a dummy battery here so it's not gonna die, so that's gonna stay constantly charged. And then this is my key light when I'm gonna sit at this desk and I'm gonna be able to live stream or do videos straight from here as well. So it's great that I can just come in, switch this light on, switch the camera on, plug it in, and I'm ready to go. And this is a Pixar Pro Glowpad 350D. I can, if I wanted to change the temperature and change how dim it is, I just like to leave it on full at daylight balanced to match 
the rest of the lights here in the room. But just to recap, this is my most favorite thing. This was the whole reason that I wanted this room was just so I could have this. It's It does the job. I walk in, everything is just attached, ready to go. Just throw it onto the wall and then that's ready to go back into my strobe. I can just come, come straight over here, put it straight in there. Then I can come over, grab a bag. And this is where I can also use this desk here, not only to work on, but it's like a, a place for me to start docking and putting everything here in the bag ready to go along with everything else. And again, when I come back, I come in, take all the batteries out, put them straight in, just park that back on the shelf till it's ready to be plugged back in. So you can see that it's just so much easier. I mean, from, from, from a mental health point of view, it's so satisfying coming in, knowing that you can put everything on charge so that when you do grab it, you know that it's gonna be fully charged, ready for your next shoot. Well, that's about it for this video, guys. If you liked it, please make sure you hit the like or share button or subscribe if you are watching this on YouTube. And as always, I will see you again next time. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye. Have some of that, mate. Ooh. That was good.